Well, good morning and welcome to Kingston West Free Methodist Church. Um, and it's great to have you join us today. Um, a few announcements for you as we begin. First of all, a uh, prayer meeting continues to take place on Thursdays at 1.30, and it's on Zoom. So if you'd like to be a part of that, check your bulletin, or you can contact me for more information. As well, the Kingston West Men's Fellowship takes place Tuesdays now. So that's Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Again, it's done on Zoom, and we invite any of the men watching this, if they're interested in uh, being a part of that, we encourage you to uh, join us for that. And again, it's done on Zoom, and you can get a hold of Pastor Keith, uh, and uh, he can get you the information. As well, you last week we had a, a video preview, but in your bulletin you'll see that uh, the Kingston uh, Pregnancy Care Center is holding a virtual banquet. They usually do a banquet uh, at the end of February each year. Well, this year they're doing a virtual banquet, and it'll take place Monday, February 22nd. Um, and uh, there's information in the bulletins that were sent out uh, this week or and uh, or that you received with your DVD or CD. And... Um, if you would like to register to be a part of that, uh, you can go to their website, um, Kingston Pregnancy Care Center. Just do a search for that, KPCC, and uh, the link is in your bulletin. But um, just go there, and you can register for the banquet, and you have the option to uh, – they're still providing food. You just have to pick it up at, at one of two locations, and you indicate that uh, in – in the checklist. So, uh, but you need to be registered in order to get in and be a part of all of that. If you don't have the ability to stream online, you can get a, a DVD copy uh, of the banquet. And again, that option is there uh, to select that. So I encourage you to uh, support them and, and uh, to sign up for that banquet. Um, and as well, we have a Tear Fund Sunday, which is coming up on Sunday, February the 21st. And um, and you'll find, uh, uh, again, information in your bulletin. You go to Tear Fund Sunday uh, and, uh, and connect directly there to give, or you can give through the church. You just need to indicate uh, that on your, uh, where, however you're sending it, let Bonnie or or um, Daryl know to mark what, and whatever amount you want to mark for Tear Fund Sunday. As well today, uh, we are going to have communion uh, following um, the message today. So if you haven't had a chance to get uh, some juice and some bread, uh, you can pause the video at this point if you like and go and get that ready and have that and the uh, recording will be there. And you may look at it and say, hmm, something's odd because I only see Pastor Stephen this morning. And uh, when it comes to communion, you'll see Pastor Keith and Pastor Fred. That's because we pre-recorded that uh, a while back. And uh, so that will be inserted in uh, for you. And that's all the announcements then that I have. Our call to worship uh, today comes from Psalm 19, and it's verses uh, 1 to 4. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to worship you today. Thank you that you are present with us, uh, uh, both here as we record, but you are present with each person uh, who is uh, viewing this and watching this. I pray that you would use it to bring glory and honor to your name, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 25 to 34. Again, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. It's entitled, Do Not Worry. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. May the Lord speak to us through his word. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, we come before you today with thanksgiving. We come before you as um, people who certainly do worry. Uh, we come before you as people who who uh, may be struggling, be it emotionally or physically and in uh, different ways. And we thank you that you are attentive to where we are at, each person that you are attentive to where we at. We are at. And so we thank you for that. We pray, Lord, that you would help us uh, increase our faith and our trust and, and our hope in you. And, uh, and Lord, we pray today as well for the needs of, of each person that is watching today. Again, whether it's uh, as many I know struggling through this uh, time of isolation and this pandemic and finding that difficult. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would fill our cup to overflowing, that you would give us opportunity to be encouragers to uh, the people that we know, be it through the internet or through a telephone call or whatever way we're able to do so. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and your feet. Uh, to the communities and the places in which you have placed us. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the physical needs of of those people that are watching. And Lord, you know each one, you know each physical need. um, And we just pray for your anointing and your touch on each one, that you would encourage them and and, uh, strengthen strengthen them, Lord, for, um, for your service. We thank you that we have the opportunity to open up your word and for you to speak into our hearts and into our lives. We thank you that we have the freedom, the freedom to turn on our computers and uh, and to watch uh, a service that brings glory and honor to you. We thank you for this country that we live in, in Canada here, and for others who may be watching from other countries. Again, thank you for where you've placed us each. And Lord, I pray your continued hand uh, upon um, all that's going on around the world. Um, no one is untouched by this pandemic. And so we just, we just pray that uh, we pray certainly your protection uh, over uh, the people. And Lord, that you would uh, uh, again thank you for the vaccines and things that have come in that direction. And we just 
we just pray that uh, that we would soon get through this challenge, but as we continue through this challenge, that we would keep our eyes focused upon you. So Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would um, speak into our hearts and into our lives today, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And our scripture reading today, related to the message that I'm going to share here shortly, comes from Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. It says, Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Well, last week we started a new series, and it's, it's entitled Entering uh, the Promised Land. And uh, in this new series, you, we could actually put a subtitle uh, to this series that says, How to Enjoy the Rest of Your Life. And today we'll talk about overcoming a key obstacle to enjoying life, which is fear. I know about this subject, and I suspect we all do. 
especially in this season of a global pandemic. The more you watch the news, if you're not careful, the more one can find themselves held in the grip of fear. And it's not just COVID that people fear. There can be so many things that can strike fear into our hearts and into our minds. We often look at the past and remember, you know, the good old days. And and as I said last week, we can sometimes get stuck in how things used to be. And uh, and we can get stuck there. But I'm uh, I'm not the best at keeping a journal. Uh, I have tried on and off over the years to do so. But but when it comes to the good old days, here's what I've noticed. When I go back and read some of what I've written many years ago often, I realize that the good old days may not have been as good as what I remember them now. It's hard to romanticize about the good old days when you're reading your actual thoughts and feelings as they occurred to you at that time. It's also interesting to note that those days that I thought were so carefree really were not. I worried back then as I do now. I had concerns about the future, about providing for my family, about my children and uh, the world that they're about to grow up in. There was anxiety about things like, would I really be able to handle going back to school and becoming a pastor? And, you know, I could just go on and on with the list. The point, though, that I want to make is that if you're not careful, fear can actually hold you back today, causing you to miss opportunities to enjoy the moment. Some people, when they look at the past, they realize that because they were so paralyzed by fear, they actually never enjoyed the good things that came along. Sound familiar? I truly hope not. But if you're like most people, you may struggle with fear of the future. Lloyd Douglas said this, if a man harbors any sort of fear, It percolates through all of his thinking, damages his personality, makes him landlord to a ghost. Fear prevents many people from ever trying anything new. I've known those who were afraid to get married, afraid to take a new job, afraid to start a new business, afraid to start a new ministry. Even worse, much worse, is that fear causes many people to quit too soon. I've known people in business or or people in ministry or people in relationships who, at the first sign of trouble, allowed themselves to give in to fear and run from the situation. These are the people who show up for the battle, get a good look at the enemy, and decide it's too risky to try, so they turn tail and go home. Many years ago, I had the opportunity to rappel down a rock face uh, near Hamilton, Ontario, and I thought it would be a lot of fun. There was a few of us that decided to give it a try that day. Now, the experts, they gave us some instructions. Uh, We geared up, and uh, we attached the ropes. But let me tell you, when you look two to three hundred feet down over the cliff, you begin to think twice. And I began to wonder, what if the rope breaks? What if the tree doesn't hold me that the rope's tied to? And on and on and on. But I said to myself, this is an experience I may never have the opportunity to do again, so I need to conquer my fear, step out over the cliff, and rappel down. And I did. And it was a really incredible experience. But some of my friends who came with me, they let their fear get the best of them, and they walked away from the opportunity. Sometimes fear prevents us from starting what we should start. Other times it prevents us from finishing what we need to finish. Always it prevents us from maximizing the moment. So in order to begin to enjoy the rest of your life, the life that God wants for you, we're going to look at uh, Joshua to discover how to overcome this uh, great obstacle that holds us back, which is fear. So how do you overcome fear? Well, you overcome it with courage. 
If you want to enter the promised land, if you want to begin to enjoy the rest of your life, you need to develop courage. That's because fear is a feeling, but courage is an attitude, an attitude that leads to actions. How do you develop courage? Well, there are three observations I want to make from our text today. First of all, I want you to see that courage is essential to any kind of leadership. In verses 6 to 9, God speaks to Joshua about courage and about carrying out his mission. And he begins by saying this, verse 6, Be strong and courageous, for you will lead my people to possess all the land I swore to give their ancestors. God's call on Joshua's life was to lead the Israelites out of the desert into the promised land. God's call on your life also involves moving in some aspect from point A to point B. God's call on your life involves some type of leadership, and that process of leading is always a point A to point B process. If your primary area of leadership is at home, then God is calling you to take your family from where they are now to where they need to be, to help them develop, to grow closer, to be more loving more supportive of one another, more committed to one another. It's a point A to point B process. The same can be said for your areas of leadership at work, at church, and in every other part of your life. And if you feel that you're not in a leadership position right now, then I would suggest that God is calling you to start leading yourself from point A to point B so that you can be where he needs you to be. What I'm saying is that in some aspect of your life, you are involved in a point A to point B process. If you're going to get where you need to be, you'll need to demonstrate courage along the way. Why do you need courage? Because there will be challenges to your leadership because there will be obstacles to overcome, because there will be times when success doesn't seem possible, because there will be days when turning back is the easiest thing to do, because you don't really know what tomorrow will bring, because you don't really know what the promised land looks like, because leaders often feel like they're in this thing all alone because most of the people you know will adopt a wait-and-see attitude, because failure always seems to be one bad decision away. When you get serious about moving forward in life, professionally, personally, relationally, spiritually, you'll find that fear, fear of the known as well as the unknown, is always willing to keep you company. It's never far away. That's why we need courage. If you want to be the leader that God has called you to be, if you want to learn to enjoy the rest of your life, you have to decide now that you will choose courage over fear at every turn in the road. So this brings us to the second observation, and that is is that courage is a choice that you make. In verses 6 and 7, God says to Joshua three times, Be strong and courageous. Now, for those who think that courage is the same kind of emotional reaction as fear, that it's just something you feel, then his words may seem impossible to you. But the fact is that we don't experience courage the same way we experience fear. Fear is a feeling. Courage is an attitude, an attitude that leads to action. That's why God told Joshua to be strong and courageous, because courage is a choice that Joshua could make. It's not as if God told Joshua, be tall or be left-handed. These are things a person they can't control. You're either tall or you're left-handed or you're not. But God told Joshua to be courageous because courage is a choice that you make. It's not a feeling. It's an attitude. In the movie entitled Proof of Life, Meg Ryan plays a woman whose husband is kidnapped and held for ransom in a South American country. 
Russell Crowe plays the hostage and negotiator trying to save her husband's life. And as he talks his way out of several bluffs and threats and ultimatums, he seems to have ice in his veins. And finally, when the talks fail, he and his colleagues take up arms and they plan a military-type rescue. As Meg Ryan watches the team prepare to make the maneuver, she says to Crow, I've never seen you afraid before. And he responds, yes, you have. His character understood the difference between fear and courage. Fear is a feeling, courage is an attitude. Eddie Rickenbacker, who was a World War I flying ace, said, Courage is doing what you're afraid to do. There can be no courage unless you're scared. Ambrose uh, uh, Redmoon, a writer from the 60s, said something along the same lines, said, Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Fear is a feeling, but you don't have to act on your feelings. Courage is a choice. It's an attitude that, that leads to an action. This should be the driving force behind our decisions. That brings me to the third observation. Courage must be nurtured. Fear comes to us naturally, without effort on our part. It's an automatic emotional reaction. Courage, on the other hand, needs to be developed. Fear is a habit, but you can make a habit out of courage if you put your mind to it. God spoke to Joshua about how to be strong and courageous. Listen to what he said. Be strong and very courageous. Obey all uh, the laws Moses gave you. Do not turn away from them and you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of the law continually. Meditate on it day and night so you may be sure to obey all that is written in it. Only then will you succeed. Here are three ways you can nurture courage. First of all, you nurture courage by following courageous examples. Moses uh, was a leadership example for Joshua. God was in, in essence saying to Joshua, do what you learned from Moses. Follow his teaching and follow his example. Though Joshua was his own man, his own leader, God reminded him from the beginning that he needed to hang on to the lessons he learned under the leadership of Moses. Do you know a few brave people whose example you can follow? Have you seen how they react to challenges and, and setbacks? Have you noticed how they stand up in, in difficult situations? Learn from them. Learn to do what they do. When you find an example to follow, follow it. This is why Paul said to the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore I urge you to imitate me. In 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, Paul says, And you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. I am so glad that you always keep me in your thoughts and that you are following the teachings I passed on to you. And the writer of Hebrews wrote in Hebrews 13.7, Remember your leaders who first taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and trust the Lord as they do. Look for examples to follow. Secondly, you nurture courage by getting into the word of God. God tells Joshua how to apply the word to his life. He tells him to do three things. Speak the word, verse 8 in our text. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Think the word, verse 8. Meditate on it day and night. Do the word, again, verse 8, so that you might be careful to do everything written in it. He's telling Joshua to immerse himself in the word of God, to know it, to speak it, to think it, and to live it. I can tell you this, the more of God's word you have hidden in your heart, the easier it is to walk courageously. David Wilkerson, who wrote The Cross and the Switchblade, tells a story about how he had the courage to face the town bully when he was in uh, school. It came by quoting scripture, he said. 
the verse specifically was Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Wilkerson had heard that the bully was after him, and when he approached him that day, David didn't know if he was about to be uh, to get cussed at or to get beaten up. But the words of Scripture gave him the courage to stand up in the face of danger. And this event set into precedent in Wilkerson's life. He faced danger repeatedly as he ministered to the gangs of New York City, and it was the Word of God that gave him the courage to move forward. Do you want the courage to face the unknown? Do you want the courage to leave the desert behind and enter into the promised land that God has promised for you? Immerse yourself in God's word. Read it. Know it. Speak it. Think it. Do it. That's how you nurture courage. Thirdly, you nurture courage by putting your trust in God. God said to Joshua, verse 9, Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Remember last week we looked at verse 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, just a few verses later, God repeats this promise to Joshua, I will be with you wherever you go. He says it again because he wants Joshua to remember, and he wants the people of Israel to remember, and he wants you to remember that he's always with you. From the time you open your eyes in the morning till your head hits the pillow at night, God is right by your side. Everywhere you go, he is with you. Do you know what that means? It means that nothing will happen that you and he can't handle together. It means that even in the battles, even in the difficulties, even in your darkest moments, God is beside you. Knowing that he is with you helps you nurture and courage the courage you need to face the future. What are you afraid of? Tomorrow? Yesterday? The known? The unknown? Success? Failure? Criticism? Pain? Defeat? Disappointment? Fear is a natural reaction to difficult circumstances, but it doesn't have to hold you back. We all feel afraid now and then. And the good news is that you don't have to give in to fear. Mark Twain said, Courage is the mastery of fear, not the absence of fear. Fear is just a feeling, but courage is an attitude, an attitude you can choose to take at any time. I want you to remember, courage isn't optional. It's necessary for anyone who wants to experience the fullness of God's blessings in life. Courage isn't automatic, it's a choice that you make. And courage doesn't come naturally, it must be nurtured through the Word of God. Fear can prevent you from entering God's place of rest. It can keep you uh, stuck in the desert forever. Don't let it happen to you. Today, choose courage and keep moving forward into the place of promise that God has planned for you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, again, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this uh, uh, story of Joshua and his rise to leadership. And uh, and Lord, as we look at his rise to leadership, uh, we understand that, uh, and I think we all relate to some extent, that uh, moving forward sometimes is fearful, and especially when we're moving into the unknown. And so, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be at work in our hearts and lives. We pray that we will be a people who continues to read and study and meditate and hide the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds. And as we do that, uh, you will give us courage, courage to do whatever you are calling us to do in our lives. May we listen. May we be obedient. And may you lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to transition to communion. The invitation. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, who live in love and peace with your neighbors, 
in who intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and, and walking in His holy ways, draw near with faith and take His holy sacraments to your comfort, and humbly kneeling, make your honest confession to Almighty God. Now please join me in the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we confess that we have sinned and we are deeply grieved as we remember the wickedness of our past lives. We have sinned against you, your holiness and your love, and we deserve only your indignation and anger. We sincerely repent and we are genuinely sorry for all the wrongdoing and every failure to do the things we should. Our hearts are grieved and we acknowledge that we are hopeless without your grace. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us. Cleanse us. Give us strength to serve and please you in newness of life and to honor and praise your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with great mercy has promised forgiveness, to all who turn to you with hearty repentance and true faith, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from our sins. Make us strong and faithful in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And again, please join me in the calling. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Sanctus. It is always right and proper and our moral duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all of the inhabitants of heaven, we honor and adore your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, let's say together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. The Prayer of Spiritual Communion. We do not come to this your table, O merciful Father, with self-confidence and pride, trusting in our own righteousness, but we trust in your great and many mercies. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs from under your table, but you, O Lord, are unchanging in your mercy, and your nature is love. Grant us, therefore, God of mercy, God of grace, so to eat at this your table, that we may receive in spirit and in truth the body of your dear Son, and being washed and cleansed through his most precious blood, we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. And let us pray the consecration of the elements. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who gave in love your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who by his sacrifice offered once for all did provide a full, perfect, and sufficient atonement for the sins of the whole world. We come now to your table in obedience to your Son, Jesus Christ, who in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly ask, and grant that we, receiving this bread and this cup, as he commanded and in the memory of his passion and death, we partake of his most blessed body and blood. And the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed upon him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your soul and body unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you. Now as we go today, uh, receive this benediction as you go. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be yours now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>